what we're going to do today is uh, uh, just basically an intro to the, uh, to the course. It is, is an important course because you're going to be learning a lot of uh, information and a lot of uh, uh, important stuff that's going to serve you well for the rest of, uh, of the course and also for your engineering uh, uh, profession. Take two seconds to just read through uh, uh, the objectives. So those are the objectives that we're going to be focusing on for today. purpose of the course. I need you to take out a, uh, yeah, take, we'll do that right now. Take out a piece of paper. Uh, just, it can be any type of paper. It doesn't have to be anything special. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a list of uh, instructions. So it's basically a description of a part. And what I want you to do is I want you to listen to the words that I'm giving you and actually draw that part for me, a three-dimensional, uh, uh, draw the part in three dimensions. Okay? <laughs> it's not for marks. <laughs> okay, so begin by drawing a brick that is eight inches wide. So try to keep, uh, you don't have to, don't use a ruler. <laughs> so only sketch and try to keep the proportions correct. So it doesn't have to be exactly eight inches, but try to uh, estimate what eight inches is. So begin by drawing a brick eight inches wide five inches deep and uh, three inches uh, high. Okay, the second instruction is uh, cut an inch off the top right corner of the brick. Okay, so cut an inch off the top right corner of the brick. So the first instruction was begin by drawing a brick eight inches wide, five inches deep and three inches high. The second instruction is cut an inch off the top right corner of the brick. Okay, do your best. If you don't fully understand it, that's uh, that's fine. Okay, the third instruction. Cut a two inch hole through the center of the top face. So cut a two inch hole through the center of the top face. And the final instruction, cut a one inch slot down the mi middle of the front face. So cut a one inch slot down the middle of the front face. Okay, so I'll read them right from the beginning. So the first instruction was begin by drawing an eight inch wide, or a brick that's eight inches wide, five inches deep, and three inches high. Then cut an inch off the top right corner of the brick. The third instruction was cut a two inch hole through the center of the top face. And the fourth instruction was cut a one inch slot down the middle of the front face. Hey, most of it look like you've uh, attempted it. So that's what it should look like. Or that's what I had in my mind when I was giving you those instructions. How many people got that? Nobody. <laughs> so in my mind, that's the part that I was trying to convey to you. That's the part that I was uh, envisioned in my head and I wanted, I wanted to get that part in, in your head. Okay, and uh, did we have much success? Well, obviously, no. I, di I, didn't, I didn't accomplish my mission, which was to communicate that information to you. Okay? And, and why, was it, why was it a failure? Why did that not work out? Anybody? Not enough detailed instructions? Why else? The way, did you fully understand what I was saying about top face and side face and all that type of stuff? It was, it was vague, right? Like uh, the language, uh, you didn't really understand the same language that, that, that I was using. So what would be in a better way of doing this? If I wanted to give you, if I wanted you, if I wanted to communicate what this part looked like, what's the most simplest way of doing it? There it is. <laughs> so that is what this whole course is about. It is basically about me having an idea in my head of what a part looks like, taking that information, putting it down on paper, it's probably the best way of doing it, and passing it to, to you so that you can understand what part that I, that I want built, or what uh, assembly that I want uh, made, or, uh, uh, or so forth. Okay, so that is the whole point. It's all about communication. That, uh, that's the number one thing about this course, is about communication. It's taking an idea, or a concept of a part, in my head, and basically making sure that it's in your head. Okay, and if you get that, that's, uh, that's the number one part, uh, important thing. Obviously, the language did not work out well, so that this is the way that we, uh, we work. And just like language, uh, everybody in, in English language, we read from left, Right, that's the syntax of it. And then, and then a sentence ends with a period, it starts with a capital. Well, there's a syntax associated with engineering drawing. And that's what my job is to teach you, is to teach you that syntax so that you understand how to basically read engineering drawings. 
Okay? Everybody clear with that? Good, good, good. Okay, with that in mind, a lot of what you guys are going to be doing, or some of the things that you're going to be doing, uh, uh, are is part is design and working in the design process. And what you can see here is uh, the concurrent design process. In the past, uh, probably in the early uh, uh, 1900s, in the uh, uh, 20th century, the way it would work is the engineers would sit in their ivory tower and they would come up with these great ideas and they pass it down and it would go down to the chain where they, the people who are actually making it would, would make the part. And the people that are actually making the part were going, shaking their head going, why did they do it? Why did that, that silly engineer do it th uh, that way? So nowadays, most of the time, design process takes place in this type of a, 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 a arrangement. So basically you have your engineers, the people that are doing the servicing, the financing, the marketing, and the producing, the planning, the documentation, and the pe people that are uh, uh, like the, uh, the graphics um, uh, people, the people that are actually ma making the parts, they're all sitting down together in the same room, or in, a, in, a, in, a, in essence. So they obviously can't be in the same room in the same place at the same time. That would you know evolve. Like if you took all these people, it would take a large amount of uh, time to get them to, to, to schedule meetings so they're all in the same place at the same time. So what we do to make it easier is we create a 3D model of that part. Okay, or uh, so let's say um, my water bottle. So let's say we're in the, man the manufacturing of water bottles. So there's my water bottle that we're going to make. So what I would do as the engineer is I would model, I have a great idea. So here's my great idea. I'm going to make a water bottle. And this water bottle is going to look like this. So I design this water bottle. So I create a 3D model, which we're going to learn in SOLIDWORKS. So I've now I've taken that idea to my head and I've put it onto, made a drawing of it basically, or a 3D representation of, of my idea. Then I basically put that idea here. And now what happens is these individuals look at it and go, hmm, what about, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I made the, uh, the, uh, the water bottle out of magenta. Well, magenta isn't the color that this year. Marketing is telling us that uh, red is the most important, uh, the popular color. So let's change the color to red. Um, uh, there's not packaging in here. Let's say, uh, uh, pa let's say the packaging department, the people that are actually going to be shipping this, uh, this water bottle. I want to make my water bottle... Um, uh, you know, with a big huge flange out here, or whatever the case is. They're saying, well, you can't do that because we're not going to be able to package uh, uh, the water bottles. So all these individuals are basically coming up with ideas of their own because they're the specialists in those areas, and they're making recommendations to my 3D model to change it. And then I can look at all those changes and I can make the change. So that I, now I take into the expert advice of all these people so that I get a product that is, uh, that is excellent. And basically you go through the steps uh, uh, the spiral steps uh, so that you, get, uh, you create a product that works. Okay? So that's one of the beauties of um, uh, SOLIDWORKS or, uh, uh, or 3D Modeler is that you're able to make a model of the part, get feedback from people, people can actually see it, they can turn it around, spin it, they get a real good feel for it, and then uh, uh, and that way you get the best product that you can, uh, can get when you go to market. Okay? If, who's mech here? You mechs, you guys will do a whole course uh, in this. We will you're doing, you're learn about uh, design. Okay, so in order, to, in order for me to take my uh, part and uh, put it on paper, I have to use a, a technique which call, is called uh, visualization and vice versa. For you guys to be able to take the drawing that I put on pa paper and interpret what, it's, uh, uh, what it means, you need to use visualization. Um, the good news is it's a learned skill. The bad news is that uh, certain people have a higher aptitude for uh, basically under uh, visualization and uh, uh, I've seen it where some students come at the beginning of the course and I ask them to visualize what a brick looks like and they they can't draw like a 3D model of a brick and that it happens so it just it's not that they're uh, they're dumb they're obviously a RMC so they're obviously uh, are very intelligent it's just that they have for whatever reason they uh, they, uh, they have a low aptitude in pitch, uh, visualizing uh, objects and I'll be honest with you my my aptitude is actually quite low for visualizing objects, but I'm, I'm teaching it now, so obviously I've learned how to, uh, how to do it. So you'll find you're, you're on that spectrum. That be, and there's other people that can visualize everything. Like uh, you give them a very complicated object and they'll immediately see what, the, what you're talking about. Okay, so you're, you're going to probably lie on the spectrum of uh, on one, of those, uh, one of those edges. If you're lying on the spectrum where you, need, where you have trouble visualization, that's where um, I need to know about it. Okay, and uh, I'm going to give you an aptitude test right now. 
It's just a quick uh, uh, aptitude test, but it will give you a few. It doesn't mean um, if you do poorly on it that uh, uh, that you're having problems. But if you do do poorly on it, I would I would send I would send little red flags off on my my head, and I'd say, okay, if I if I have trouble, I should come and see uh, uh, Mr. Davies right away because he might uh, uh, he'll be able to give me some help. So, and this is a course that you need to get help right away because if you get to the sixth or seventh week, it's it's too late. So. This aptitude test test is basically a way to help you uh, determine if you need help uh, and uh, uh, to get help right away. Does that make sense? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll uh, pass the aptitude test out and you can do it. And again, it's not for marks or anything else like that. I'm not gonna collect them. We'll mark them, uh, we'll mark them together. Uh, it's just for your information. Okay, so for uh, question one, the answer was uh, B. Uh, for uh, question uh, two, it was uh, B, and for uh, question three, it w uh, from the uh, going from the left, uh, it was uh, the third and the and the fifth of the last one. One, two, three. Oh, uh, so the, f the first question, second question, uh, the third question, where it says identify the two rotated versions. Yeah, so it's this, uh, the third one and the fifth one. So uh, if you want, I can go over them with, the, with you later. But uh, uh, it's it's uh, the point of the test is if if you got perfect, that probably means you're on the the side of the scale where you visualize objects really well, which is a bonus for you. It's probably going to make this course uh, uh, very uh, relative or a lot easier for you. You're still going to have to practice, but it's going to make it a lot easier. If you got uh, uh, none right or only one right, then that's probably you're on the end of the spectrum where you need to actually, uh, you're going to have to spend some time learning how to visualize and that's where you need to come and see me as much as you can. If you're in between, uh, like if you get, uh, if you got, uh, um, uh, uh, and I, I'm, I, I'm making it out of four because I'm saying for question three it's, uh, um, uh, I'm saying that's uh, two, worth uh, two points, but if you got two, two or three, uh, right, that probably means you're in the spec middle somewhere, so that's up to you. Uh, you're going to have to gauge how, you, how well you're doing in the course, but again, if you have trouble, always my door is always open. You can, uh, uh, you can always uh, get a hold of me, and I can give you some help. Okay, was that helpful to everybody? Okay, it's only, it's only gauged. Don't get all panicked that, uh, you know, you're going to fail the course because you only got, uh, uh, you know, one out of four. It's not a big deal. Uh, people that have, have trouble visualizing have done really well in this course and got uh, 90, 95 percent, and people that have uh, been excellent on the other side of the, point, uh, the side where they're excellent visualizer failed the course. Okay, and w uh, yeah, so it, it goes both ways. <laughs> okay, but it just gives you an idea of where, where, where you are. Okay, so visualization. The reason we visualize is so that I can take an idea in my head and basically uh, put that idea on paper and then for you guys uh, that, that I'm passing the paper to, the, uh, to take that information that I put on the paper and interpret it so you can actually visualize what the object looks like. In order to do that, what, we've, what we do nowadays is we actually model the part first. And what I mean by model is we create a 3D representation of that part. And for that, we use uh, uh, SOLIDWORKS. Okay, that's uh, and we'll look, we'll talk about it here. So, uh, um, and SOLIDWORKS is basically, it's a, it creates a CAD model. Okay, so the, uh, the CAD model can be made in different ways. And the, these are the ways that have occurred in the, in the past. Uh, SOLIDWORKS is what's called a parametric uh, uh, modeler. It basically, what it does, is it's fancy for basically saying you can uh, set relationships between this side and this side and the, uh, this uh, thickness and uh, uh, you can create all these formula and you can put it through uh, um, finite element analysis. Okay, so it's an exceptionally strong um, tool that if you, especially if you go Mac and I think believe Civil uses it at some point and I, actually Chem uses it too. I'm not sure, the only one, uh, department that it doesn't use it extensively is uh, uh, electrical uh, engineering, and computer engineering. But all the other ones use this, uh, th these ideas uh, a lot. Okay? Uh, and so you'll not only use it in this course, but you'll use it in second year, third year, and uh, in, in fourth year. And uh, we're moving more and more uh, towards that. So uh, we're, do I have any electrical engineers or people that are thinking of going electrical? Okay, so uh, that, that, I'm gonna go do a little segue here. So why are you doing this course? Besides, you have to, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Do you, why, why do you think the military makes you do this course? Yeah. What? Yeah, circuit diagrams to some. It, it helps you with that. But what else? Can anybody help him? <laughs> Think about uh, uh, what is a uh, what is a uh, or a naval engineer or a naval engineer or a naval officer. Let's say I'm a Mars officer. Why is it important that I know? How could this course help me when I leave RMC? Can you think of a reason why? Yes, on board a ship, you've got decks, three, four, five, six, depending on what type of ship you're on, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, five decks. And you, as an engineer especially, or as anybody on board a ship, you have to know where you are on that ship at all times. Because you obviously don't want to be underneath the ammunition depot or the, uh, the ammunition storage area when there's a fire. So, <laughs> and, you have, and when you're fighting a fire, you need to know where things are. So this course, visualization, allows you to help you understand how, uh, uh, how the ship is laid out. And that's one of the first things you do when you get on board a ship, is you, learn, you have to learn your ship. You have to know exact, they basically take you and they put you in a room or in a compartment and they say, what is on your port side, what's on your starboard side, uh, uh, what's after you, what's for you, and they expect you to know what's in each of those compartments. And that's basically involved in visualization, because you're given a map, per se, uh, which is basically a drawing, which is an idea that's basically put on a piece of paper and you're expected to learn it. Because that's a naval application. Give me an army application. What's that? Representing the battlefield. On a map, right? And that's what a map is, or just understanding where things are, the elevations and stuff like that. Uh, equipment in ar the army. Uh, even though you might be an armored officer or an infantry officer, a lot of those individuals, we actually teach the course uh, uh, ac across the road. It's basically a course where we take people that are Mars officers, uh, or not Mars officers, uh, infantry officers, armored officers, and we give them technical skills so that th they can be involved in the, in the design process to procure new equipment. Okay, so because they want people that are actually using the equipment to uh, be involved in the, in the process. Okay, so we got an armor, army uh, example, we've got a Navy example, I need an Air Force example. Yeah. So basically, a map is basically a uh, map is basically. Uh, yeah. There you go. And the and the same same thing as visualization. So even though you're an electrical engineer, you will uh, <laughs> you will uh, you will use it uh, in your in your career, guaranteed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Back to this. Okay. So uh, the way that we take our idea is we we have the right idea in our head. What what the way we do it nowadays is we go to SolarWorks and we create a model. And the model that we're going to we use a parametric model, which is SolarWorks. Uh, the way so then we have to discuss how we're going to make those models. These are the basic uh, methods that we can uh, use uh, to make our, uh, our model. Okay, we can use a, a basic solid three sheets. We can do a sweep profile 3D space Boolean operations. What does that all mean? Good question. Okay, so there are basic shapes. So if you take a very complex part, you can take these basic shapes and put them together to make a very complex sharp, uh, uh, object. Okay, so you can take a, a cylinder, uh, attach it to a rectangular prism, take it to a cube and make a cone, and uh, I'm not sure what you'll make, but it'll probably look cool. <laughs> so I need a volunteer here. Come on up. I need you to build, with that concept, the idea of bullying, and you can get help from your friends. I want you to build me a snowman. So, so talk, talk, me, talk me through uh, the concept of building a snowman. Well, there's three successive these smaller balls stacked on top of each other. There you go. So, make your, uh, so you're going to create uh, uh, three spheres. Where you go. So don't put them together yet. Just make them. So what he's doing is he's making his basic solid shapes. <laughs> Real life snow. <laughs> Last year I wasn't able to do this with the course because there was no snow. <laughs> okay, so there's our basic shapes. So we, uh, we'll get into the other ones in a, in a second. Okay, so... Uh, then what we can use is what's called Boolean operations. So now we've got our basic shapes. And now what I can use are uh, combinations of these b basic shapes to make more uh, complex shapes. So what I can use is union, 
which is basically adding uh, two shapes together and sub subtraction. And we'll, uh, let's not worry about the uh, uh, intersection. So we can use the union and subtraction, which is basically addition of material and subtraction of material. Okay, so if I want to make my snowman, uh, what, which, which one am I going to choose? Union. Union. Okay, so we'll uh, put, put our, uh, our basic shapes that we created and put them together. Okay, voila. Now, what else do we, uh, what other basic shapes could we use that are an example of subtraction? To make uh, to improve our the appearance of our snowman. Do you like maybe take off the bottom of the sphere? Maybe so it's got a flat surface so it can sail. I like it. So uh, uh, maybe take a. Uh, uh, can I borrow your ruler? So this is a let's say this is a rectangular prism, which kind of. <laughs> so this is a rectangular prism. So use your rectangular prism, and basically. Ninja cutter. Yeah, ninja cutter. <laughs> There we are. Perfect. Okay, what else can we do? What else? What other things can we uh, think about his face? How can we improve the appearance of our, our snowman with uh, using uh, subtraction and basic shapes? Yeah. Taking more spheres, cutting them in half, and then using those as like your chunks of coal for eyes and mouth kind of thing. Perfect. Or uh, I'll, I'll take take your idea. So, uh, what is this? What shape is that? Cylinder. C cylinder. So I could use a negative cylinder. So use your negative cylinder to make uh, two eyes. <laughs> okay, and here's another uh, negative cylinder. You can use that for uh, for a mouth or a nose if you want. <laughs> if you <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay, cool. So does everybody get the basic uh, basic idea? So basically, you're using basic shapes. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you're using uh, using basic shapes to in union or addition to put them together. And then you can also use basic shapes and subtraction, or what do we call it? There's some fancy name that we used it. Yeah, subtraction, uh, to basically uh, create shapes as well. We, we slopped off uh, uh, part of the snowman, we made eyes for them, uh, we, we did a bunch of different things. Okay, cool. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a very complex shape and you're breaking it down into small parts. Okay, and you'll find that's a very uh, common theme when you're using SOLIDWORKS. If you, if you look at the whole part at, uh, uh, at once, you, it will, some, some of the parts will blow your mind. So you'll be like, there's no way in heck that I'm ever going to be able to make this part. But if you take each part separately, like our, our snowman, like the, make the spheres and then take, uh, take cuts off the bottom and take them step by step by step, it, it, you'll be surprised at what you can do. And it's always fun. When you guys get in there, you'll be, uh, uh, it's always fun for us watching you guys because it, the first part is actually uh, relatively simple and you guys will, some of you guys will struggle with it and you'll be like, oh my God. This is horrible. And then by the end of the, the last week, you'll be, you'll be amazed at what type of parts you'll be able to put, put together. It's, it's a, a very, uh, very rewarding to see you guys do that. Okay. So we talked about uh, CAD models. Basically, we want to create a 3D representation. We talked about basic shapes. You can, if, it, if it's a simple part, we can just use a basic shape. If it's not, we have to use Boolean operations, which is basically taking Boolean or basic shapes and adding and subtracting them to get to more complex shapes. We also can do. Uh, the second choice here, which we'll go to. Sweeping profiles through space. Uh, you'll get very comfortable, with, especially with this one and this one. So extrusion. If I want to make this, uh, let's say this is a perfectly, uh, uh, or this is a, a solid box. If I wanted to make that solid box, the, the easiest way for me to do it would be extrusion. What you simply do is you would uh, create a two-dimensional object or two-dimensional shape, which I'm going to use as this page, so a, a, a rectangle, and I basically extrude that page through space. And what's my end result? A, a box, a solid three-dimensional box. So you're basically taking a, a two-dimensional box and you're pushing it through space. Or if you want, you, you're giving it depth, and that's how you. That's basically extrusion. Okay, so you could create. Um, uh, this water bottle is it's a cylinder what would be my two-dimensional shape that I would use circle. circle so I basically take my circle and I extrude it through space okay so that's uh, that's extrusion and you'll use that right away once, once we get into the SOLIDWORKS lab that will be one of the first things you'd be using I've lost my chalk again okay the um, the second one revolve how else could I make this part 
Yeah? Excellent. So um, there's my center line. I take a two-dimensional rectangle and I spin it 360 degrees around. So basically picture this. So there's my page. I'll get you to hold that there. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to spin it 360 degrees. And what do I create? I create a cylinder, okay? And that's, those are basic shapes. Now I take this two-dimensional shape and I do crazy cuts in it and I uh, do all these neat things and I spin that and now I can create some more complex uh, uh, parts. And the same with uh, extrusion, okay? So does everybody get those two conce uh, concepts? They're the ones that uh, we're going to use this almost every time you're in the lab, you'll use this. You'll use this quite a bit, uh, not as much, and you use this less frequently, but I believe we do use it uh, once. Okay. You will use this, though, uh, once you're in, uh, uh, in third and fourth year, or even second year, when you're doing more complex parts, you'll be using uh, the sweep. Okay. And what is the sweep? So the sweep, let's say you wanted to make, um, uh, I'm in kid mode because <laughs> that's what I do uh, when I'm not teaching you guys. Uh, do you guys know the, um, you know, the simple kids' toys? Like for toddlers, they have those, uh, you know, they're basically a, a complex shape and you have beads. And you push the beads. You, you know what I'm talking about. If I yeah. give you that example, before I had kids, my examples were always video games and and sports and stuff like that. Now they're kids stuff. <laughs> so if I wanted to, if I'm the designer, oops, if I'm the designer and I want to make this shape, so this shape is basically uh, uh, a rod that goes uh, three, uh, through through three-dimensional space. How can I do that? Everybody any idea? It's, I'll give you an idea. It's with the sweep, but that's probably not going to be much help. Can anybody think how I do it? How I, or how to make it in three dimensions? Well, you uh, draw a line of the path that you want, and you sort of make a circle at the bottom. Follow the line. Perfect. And that's exactly what you do. So what I, what I basically do is I create a two-dimensional... Um, I create a th two dimensional uh, shape, which is my circle, and then I move, I show a path, I trace the path with just a simple line. So uh, that's the object I want. So I basically take this, uh, so I have a two dimensional line here, I have a two dimensional um, circle here, and I basically take that circle and I follow the path. And what that does is it will create. Uh, uh, a nice uh, bar that I can use for my, my beads. Okay. So that, these are ways that we can basically create uh, uh, another, this is another method we can create a 3D object. Okay. And we already talked about this, basically how, how we represent objects. So basically uh, uh, we assemble our basic positive shapes, which was our snowman, uh, then we, uh, and to make our, and then we position the basic positive shapes, uh, uh, so we stack them on top of each other. Uh, we use a uh, Boolean addition to form the followed shapes. Uh, so basically we say that now this is w one snowman as opposed to three uh, uh, separate balls. Uh, we assemble the basic negative shapes, so we got out our uh, negative cylinder, we got, uh, we got out another negative cylinder, we got out our rectangular prism, which I should give back to you. Did I steal from him? It'll be a little wet, sorry. <laughs> And then uh, uh, we position our basic negative shapes. So we say exactly where we want to take the part away from it, and then we do our subtraction. Okay, so that's uh, that's the way that's the theoretical way that you do it, and you, you'll learn it's basically the same idea when you get in the, in, in the SolidWorks. Okay, so the whole point of this is the ability to make 3D representation of the part that's in my head. Now I'm going to go to SolidWorks and make that uh, uh, that, that representation on in SolidWorks. Can anybody see a problem? with just having uh, the 3D object represented on SOLIDWORKS? What, what would be the problem from a practical standpoint? If we need to copy the software to see what your, to look at the model. Right. And that, that's bit, so now uh, most of the time, and we, st we're, we, we say we're, uh, uh, we're paperless, but what do, we, what do we still do with most of the stuff? Print it out, or you put it on a, a, a computer screen or a tablet or something that you can, is only uh, two dimension. So now we have a problem. Now we've got this great three dimensional object, 
And we've got to take that three-dimensional object and reconvert it back to a two-dimensional shape so that we can represent it on, on paper. But it has to be done in such a way that you can visualize that object. So there's a three-dimensional object. You need to be able to take, look at a two-dimensional paper and get an idea of what that object looks like. Or not even an idea. You have to know what that object looks like. You have to be, visualize the entire thing, especially if you're dealing with something that's really, uh, really important and a part that you're making that's really important. Okay. So this whole process of taking a 3D object and putting it on a piece of paper is called uh, uh, projection. Okay, so it's basically taking a 3D object and putting it on a, a two-dimensional surface. There's three components uh, to it that affect uh, how that works. And we'll quickly look at them right now. There's line of sight, orientation of object to line of sight, and orientation of projection plane to line of sight. Okay, so here, we have, uh, here's our three-dimensional object. That's our projection plane. The projection plane is just, uh, if you want to think about it, just, it's a piece of paper. It's the thing, it's the, uh, the material that you're projecting the object onto. So th think about it as a piece of paper or a piece of uh, 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 acetate. Okay? And then that is, that is you. Okay, so that when you're doing this, when you're doing projection, you can have, uh, uh, lines of sight that converge, which is basically our normal, the way that we look at the world. The lines from the object are passing through the projection plane, going to the eyes of the observer, or they can be infinity. And infinity, that's something that's, uh, 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 that we just use so that we can construct uh, 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 projections. Okay, so those are the, uh, your lines of sight can be either at infinity, or the observer can be at infinity, which means parallel projection lanes, or the, the observer can be at a fixed distance, which means that the, uh, the lines converge. Okay, everybody get that? We're gonna be, go, be going over this, I'm gonna go over it quickly because we're gonna be using it uh, for the next uh, probably uh, two weeks. Okay, so it's, uh, we'll come back to this theme. We also, what's gonna affect your projection is not only the lines of sight, which are here again, but also the orientation of your object to the, uh, to the um, uh, to the lines of sight, and that makes sense. So obviously if you turn your object, your three-dimensional object, so if I turn that object, it's going to look differently to you. That's just a very common, uh, common sense. Okay, and that's basically all that's saying. So as I move, as I rotate my object in relationship to the lines of sight, that's going to change the projection. The third uh, one, it's a little more complex, is the orientation of the projection plane. Okay, so that's basically saying you're changing the projection plane uh, so that you're, lo you're looking in relationship to the lines of sight. And I, I'll give you an example. It's probably best to give you an example of this. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, I need three volunteers. Okay, one, two, one more. Three, come on up. Okay, so again, projection. We have a, a 3D object, and we want to take that 3D object, and we want to make. Uh, uh, she, you want to come over, come on this side. You want to take this 3D object, and we want to make it, put it onto a, a 2D, a 2D piece of paper or a 2D piece of uh, of something. Okay, how do we do that? So we let's put our object here. I'm going to take you. I want you to look directly through here. Okay, so make sure your your basic face is right there, and, uh, and trace what you see. Okay, you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to look directly down. Yep, and trace what you see. And you're going to do uh, uh, right inside there. Okay. So can everybody see what they're doing there? So they're basically tracing exactly what they see uh, along the projection plane. And there's three projection planes there, right? We have our, uh, what's called our top projection plane, our front projection plane, and our right projection plane. So 3D object. Three projection planes, top, front, and the right-hand side. Now what I can do is I can unfold the box. Now you just have one projection plane that allows you to visualize what that two-dimensional, or the three-dimensional object is. So you've got a two-dimensional projection plane, which is uh, 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 the front, the top, and the side. One sheet of paper basically representing a three-dimensional object. Okay, so that is projections. There's different types of projections, and we're going to look at that in a second. 
So, or before we get into the different types of projections. So what this is, this is my projection plane. That's my 3D object. My line of sight is, uh, the lines of sight are parallel because I had the individuals look directly uh, um, uh, above uh, the object. The object was, uh, uh, or parts of the object were par parallel with, uh, uh, with the lines, so, some weren't. And the projection plane, were, in this case, for the front, was parallel with, uh, with this face. So depending where I put, let's go back to that, because that's the example that I really wanted to focus on. So depending where I put this projection plane is going to give you a different uh, uh, object or a different uh, uh, representation. Okay, so uh, and I, I could, if I really wanted, was really concerned about this cut here, then I put the projection plane so that projection plane was parallel with that, uh, that cut. And that, what's, uh, that makes what's called a true size and shape, uh, one face which is true size and the other is distorted. Again, don't worry about this, we'll get into more detail. Just understand that the, th the components are, uh, there's three components to a projection. And those are the lines of sight, which is basically your, uh, the way you're looking. Uh, the orientation of the object, so basically how this object is orientated, which makes sense. And the third one is the orientation of the projection plane. So where is that projection plane located? Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and again, we'll, we'll spend some time on this. Okay, this is a, on your aptitude page, on the back of it. Uh, you'll see this page. Uh, we're not going to use it today, but we're going to use it uh, uh, next week. So here are our components. We have the line of sight, orientation of the object line to line of sight, and orientation of the projection plane to line of sight. Then we have these four boxes down here, or four rows here. Each of those four rows is a type of projection. And that's for the next probably five weeks or four weeks. We're going to be learning, for the first two weeks, we're going to be learning orthogonal projection. So next week and the following week, because this is the most important one. And that's basically what you did right there. We're going to be learn. We're going to be. We're going to talk about briefly about perspective. We're going to talk about isometric projections, and we're going to talk about oblique projections. Okay, so that's really uh, what you're going to be doing. You're going to be taking a 3D object and learning how to represent it in, in two dimensions. Okay. Okay, so that's orthogonal. So what I've done, or what the this uh, engineer has done, or, or draftsman has done, is taken a 3D object here and represented it in uh, in uh, basically a, a front view, a top view, and a side view, and all those views are basically on one uh, on one plane or one uh, one uh, surface or one piece of paper. Okay, can you kind of see what what's going on there? So basically, it's taking this box and unfolding that box, and we'll spend uh, two weeks talking about uh, this because this is it. This is what you use uh, majority of the time to uh, uh, indicate how a part is made and what it looks like. Okay. This is called perspective. We're basically, you get for the next 10 seconds, you're going to hear me talk about perspective, and that's, uh, that's basically it. It's more of an artist's rendition of how an object looks. For us, uh, it's probably the most realistic uh, way an object looks on paper, but in reality, it's, it, for an engineer, it's not, very it's not very much use. It is used for marketing and uh, for obviously for art, but it's not much use for us. So that, which doesn't look very pretty, uh, and doesn't look very realistic is actually much much more useful to an engineer and to a te uh, technician and to a uh, tradesperson than uh, uh, than what something that looks uh, looks nice. Okay. Isometric we will be using uh, as well. What do you think the beauty of isometric is? You, you can see it here. So here here's our uh, object. You basically learn how to do uh, uh, actually not that's one. Uh, w what what's the beauty of isometric? Do you think? It gives you an idea of what it looks like in three. Right. So this block is, you can kind of get a, a, a relatively good idea of what that block looks like. This takes skill. The multi-view or the orthogonal, it takes a bit of skill to actually picture what you're looking at. Okay, and that's where the visualization comes in a lot of. Okay. And the final one is oblique. And the oblique is basically, uh, you've, you've been doing oblique probably since you were a kid. You know, drawing basic uh, 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 cubes and houses and stuff like that. That's, that, that's basically oblique. Okay, it's very it's similar to the isometric, but it's a, there's a slight difference to it. And again, it's for the same reason. It's easy to, for people to visualize. Okay. Okay, sketching. Um, the pencils that you uh, so 
even though most of our work is going to be done in uh, uh, SOLIDWORKS, I still require you to be able to sketch and have a basic understanding of how to sketch. And the reason is, is because even though a lot of the work is done with engineers uh, and tradespeople with, uh, uh, with computer files, still at the end of the day, if I'm on board ship or I'm in an airfield or uh, I'm in the field, sometimes I need to give a quick sketch of what's going on and, or, uh, 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 so that I can pass information from, that's in my head to another person. And again, we, we could, I could talk to the person and say, well, you should do this, this, and this, but we saw what happened uh, with the example in class. We get a messed up uh, part. So it's always good to have ability to, to basically do sketching. To help you out with that, we've given you, uh, you, have two, you should have two pencils. Uh, one is 0.5 millimeters and one is 0.9 millimeters. Um, you might have to use some uh, square papers. Uh, when you do it, you want a main proportion of the feature. So remember we sketched our brick. Try to keep eight inches, eight inches, and try to respect the proportions. So if uh, you know something's like 800 meters, you're going to have a uh, uh, have a problem. But try to keep if it's 800 meters by 800 meters, then you should obviously be doing a, a, a square. Okay, so that's the type of uh, thing you're talking about. It. This is important. Um, construction lines. When you're sketching an object, keep the construction lines really light. And so I would recommend using your 0.5 millimeter uh, pencil. So sketch it get a feel for how the object light looks and then when you're done then what you can do is you can go over those construction lines to make them thicker using the 0.9 millimeter uh, pen and then erase anything you, uh, you don't want. The reason you want to keep your construction lines erasable and light is because obviously you're, gonna, you're probably going to make mistakes. We, we all make mistakes and that way it's easier to erase it. If you immediately go to the, what you think is the right answer you might find out that that's not the right answer later on and then already you've, you've got this dark thick line which is going to be very hard to erase. And what I'll do, sketching is one of those things that I will give you feedback as you go along. It's very much, uh, you have to try, again, it's one of the, when we talked about uh, how to succeed in the course, being practical, this is, you need to do it. Okay, dealing with, we talked about uh, uh, engineering being a form of communication or engineering drawing being a form of communication. Uh, you need, just like you need to know that a sentence starts with a capital and ends with a, a period. A lot of our syntax uh, is not uh, capitals and periods, but it's actually uh, lines. And each lines have different uh, meanings. So what you can see here are a bunch of lines and the meanings that they have. So we've got uh, visible lines, hidden lines, center lines, and so forth. I don't, you don't need to know what they are right now. We'll learn them as we go along through the course. What you do have to know is that there are different types of lines and there are different thicknesses. What you'll notice is that uh, we, there are 0.35 millimeters and uh, you have 0.7 uh, uh, millimeters. Can you see a problem when you're sketching with that? Y yeah, you, you have 0.5 millimeter pencils and 0.9 millimeter pencils. Okay, so when it comes the thick one, 0.7 millimeters, that's when you use the 0.9 millimeter pencil, so the thick pencil. For the 0.335 millimeter pencil, you're obviously going to use your, your thin one, your 0.5 millimeter pencil. It's not such a big deal in SOLIDWORKS because uh, uh, you can do what you, what you need to do. This is what, this is what you need to do your uh, homework. Okay, so uh, if you go to page 27 of your text, so I write that down, uh, that's going to give you, uh, it's basically a representation of, of this. Okay, and along with the uh, sketching, another skill that we're going to be learning along the way is uh, uh, lettering. And again, this is something that you need to uh, practice and just uh, do in your homework, which I'll be giving you in a couple seconds there. Um, uh, you'll have the ability to practice. It's not for uh, marks or anything, uh, but it is something that's uh, good to do. What I suggest you do is if you go to uh, uh, page 36 to 41 in your text, it will give you examples of how uh, you should uh, letter. Uh, most of the times on, uh, when we ask you to put your, uh, your name and your date and your student number on the, uh, the assignments, we expect that to be lettered. Okay? And again, this is something, and I'll give you feedback on, uh, on, on your lettering. Basically, all I want you to, and I'm not expecting everybody to have perfect writing, but I do expect everybody to, to try to use uh, the basic uh, block lettering that was uh, indicated in, uh, on the, those pages. Okay? That's basically it. Okay, so let's quickly do a review and then we'll get you in the, uh, in the classroom or in the, the lab, which is the fun part. Uh, we talked about how to succeed in the course. How to succeed is basically to, to be professional and uh, 
the way that you want to think about professionalism is if uh, think about think of being here as a as a job. Okay, the, uh, so I expect. Uh, if you, if I was your employer, I would expect you to be on time. I'd expect you to be prepared. I'd expect you to have done your the work. Uh, I'd expect you to ask me questions if you don't understand. Just uh, think about professionalism. Think about what you'd expect somebody to, be, to do if they were if this was an actual job, uh, vice uh, classroom. Okay. Uh, we talked about uh, course introduction and expectations. I do want to go through uh, uh, this with you. So you picked up. The beauty of this course is, is that you guys have your own student package. The student package will basically take you from uh, right from the very beginning of the course all the way to the end. Okay, so you have your title page. Your next page is your uh, your table of contents. Uh, the third page is the the course outline. Um, you also see there's uh, Dr. Assad and uh, or Dr. Asgar and uh, Dr. Woke. Uh, they work here permanently. They're in the um, uh, they're on the they're in the first floor. They're offices, so do not be afraid to go talk to them. Okay, they'll they'll help you out as well if you uh, need something that's, that's pressing. And Mr. Sagan's uh, office, he is right beside the computer lab. His office is right beside there, and he loves helping. That's why he's in this job, because <laughs> he loves helping people. So uh, please uh, please use those resources. Uh, we already talked about the textbook. Get, you need the textbook. Uh, uh, get it as soon as possible. Bring it to class. Uh, you can read the course description yourself. Uh, we already talked about uh, attendance, that's mandatory, and I expect you to be on time. Academic misconduct, really important. So what I mean by academic misconduct, in this course what it basically means is that any work that you do, and we'll talk about it uh, when we get in the computer lab, has to be saved on, it has to be your own. And what I mean by your own is you have to be the one that's moving the mouse and doing the clicking. So that doesn't mean that you, you, you can work together and do, the project, or, and do the work together, but you have to be the, actually the one moving the mouse, uh, and, it, and that's your work. And when you save it, it has to be on your W drive in your account. Okay, so the electronic file. It can't be. Uh, uh, you can't take a memory stick and go to somebody else's computer, copy their parts, put it on your memory stick, and then put it into your computer and dump that file into your in your account. So basically, if you're using a memory stick, you're probably doing something that's not right. You, you should not. You need ever to use a memory stick in this course. Does that make sense? Okay, so. Uh, if you have any questions about if it's if it's right or wrong, come see me, and I can uh, give you uh, give you some more more help on that. But uh, it'll, it'll become clearer as we get into the computer lab what what's required and what's uh, what's not. Okay. But basically, if you're, if you're using a memory stick, you're probably doing something wrong. And if you're not the one actually moving the mouse on your own work, then you're probably doing something wrong there. Okay. Uh, marks. So you see the uh, the breakdown. On, that's on page four. The the breakdown of uh, the marks. Assignments are worth quite a bit in this course, as you can see, and that's because we need you to do your assignments because that's the only way you're going to get better in this course. We do have a midterm exam. Uh, we, do, we have two exams. You'll see there's a CAD exam, which is basically testing your ability to use the, uh, the SOLIDWORKS program. And we have a final exam, uh, which takes place at the same time. They're both final exams. And that's basically testing your, your theoretical knowledge about uh, this course. It's basically, do you understand what uh, engineering graphics is all about? Okay, we'll talk more about the, those later on. And there's also a project that's worth 5%, uh, uh, and that's at the very end of the course. Okay. Important note, you can see at the very bottom, or the, uh, under that, um, you need to complete all your work in order for, uh, to be eligible to write these final exams. And remember I was telling you about uh, the case where on the spectrum, uh, the super part, smart people that uh, could visualize things really easily, this is where uh, I've had people not pass the course because they think that they're, they're good, and they, they are good at what they're doing, but they think they don't have to do the work. And they, and they, a mistake, they get a little frustrated, but they, they, I do not let them write their final exam. So you need to do all work in this course to, uh, to be able to pass the, or be able to be allowed to write the exam. Okay. Um, weekly assignments, we'll talk about those in a, in a second. Uh, uh, and we already talked about uh, uh, CAD notes. Uh, uh, basically, CAD is basically your file has to be in your, on the W drive. Okay. Uh, everybody brought headphones as well. Okay, so bring those every week. You definitely bring the the headphones. Okay, page five is. Uh, I'll let you read that on your own time. It's a marking guide. So if you want to know how why we're marking things or why we're not uh, taking marks off or why we're taking marks off, this will give you an idea. So when you're doing your assignments, I would look at this uh, to give it get a clue of uh, uh, what you need to do, and it will become more and more make more sense as uh, we move through the course. Okay. Uh, next, point, uh, next page, page eight, uh, that's uh, lecture one, what we've uh, covered. Basically, what it, it tells you exactly what we're going to be uh, covering, and it tells you um, 
uh, yeah, it basically just tells you what, to, what we cover in each week. Uh, and the ninth page, that bit every week will not only have uh, what we're covering, but will also clearly indicate what is required for homework. So it will tell you what to do for sketching, which is basically what we're doing right now, and it will tell you what to do when you're in the, in the computer lab. So if you're ever in doubt of what, uh, what's required, this is the page that you go to. So you, you basically just through it, uh, you go through it systematically. Uh, the only caveat I put under that is you can start the sketching and then say, okay, I'm going to take a break. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to work on the CAD. Uh, you can, it's up to you what you want to focus on. So some people do all the sketching first and then do the CAD. Uh, some people do all the CAD first and then do the sketching. I, it's up to you how you want to go about doing it. And then uh, at the very bottom, it says deliverables. It will tell you exactly what you need where. So it'll tell you what, uh, uh, what's in your folder, so that's on the computer, and what you have to be handed in in actual in, uh, in uh, hard copy. Uh, everything is due, basically, unless I tell you otherwise, the, the next day, or the next, uh, next week, at the beginning, beginning of class. Okay, and I'm open with the beginning of class, like if, as long as it's, uh, uh, I know, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so that's that. And then basically the next uh, pages are, um, uh, are the, the homework for that specific week, and that re basically repeats. So for this week, uh, you have the, the lettering to do. So that's basically just for you to practice. I'm not going to collect it. It's, it's, not for, uh, uh, it's not for homework, and you can tell because it says A1, uh, A1, uh, A1 practice. Okay. What is going to be collected is the A1 uh, printing and uh, line exercise. So basically what you need to do is there's A through H. Basically for, uh, so for like, like the example is D. So you see D, D points to this uh, uh, section line. So what you need to do is label what the, uh, the line is. So uh, uh, right, you'd write section line and you write what type of uh, uh, line it is. Well, it's a, it's a thin line and you'd have to give a, an example. So you have to use the right type of pencil uh, for that. Okay. So you need to do that for the, all the other ones through A through H. Obviously, F is being uh, done for you. And you, if you go into your text, I think it's page 27 I said it was, um, uh, that will tell you exactly where uh, uh, those lines. Okay. Lettering is important in this, so take the time to properly uh, uh, letter the parts. Okay, the next part is uh, A1 practice. This is for the, uh, it's for CAD. So we're going to be using, when you get into the computer lab, this is what you're going to be uh, uh, starting to work on. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that once we get in there. And then A1 uh, primary shapes. And that's the uh, CAD, that's, that's what's due for, for homework. Okay? Is that kind of clear? So again, if you have any questions about what is due and what is not, not due, always go back to the, um, this assignment sheet, and there's one for each week, and it will tell you very clearly, or you can obviously uh, ask me. For this course, all the computer work, meaning the practices and the assignments, must be saved on a special disk that is reserved for us. It is the W drive. Its name is Drafting. Double click on the My Computer icon, and you should see a list of available network drives. Your list will probably be different than mine, but at least you should have the L drive, the P drive, and the U drive, which is your personal drive. If by any chance the W drive appears in your list, you don't have anything else to do. If it doesn't, you will have to go to the network drive, double click, go to Mac, find the 167.267 W mapping folder, Double click and inside you will have this executable file. Double click and it should load the W drive for you. So when I go back, I have now the drafting drive listed. To access the tutorial videos, simply double click on the drafting drive and you will find the course file folder. Double click on it and this will bring you to the links folder that you will use every week. Double click and you will find other folders. In topics, a series of Microsoft Word documents give the content of the videos. In provided files, you will find parts prepared for your practice, but this will happen for later lessons. Finally, the last type of folder will be the one labeled with A and a number. Those folder will be added as we progress and they will contain the actual links. 
Double clicking on it will open the video file, which can be started by clicking on the big arrow. As mentioned previously, all your CAD work should be saved on the W drive. A unique folder for yourself has been prepared in the appropriate section. It will be identified by the student numbers. Make sure that you save all the electronic files in it as they might be verified. Let's move in the computer lab and get started.